Hey everybody, this is Dr. Perry from Stop Chasing Pain and the Pain Laser Center coming at you. Wanted to uh, kind of throw down a really quick <clears throat> free webinar. Hopefully you only last about 10 minutes, but sometimes when I get to talking about the topic that I love, I just can't shut up, which I don't think is a bad thing. But uh, what I want to cover today is uh, functional movement common sense. It ain't rocket science. And this is a, kind of a brand new venue that I'm doing. I'm using a Prezi format so forgive me if I'm kind of all over the place but you'll get the idea it's a really cool format to help get ideas out there and I I really decided to do this webinar because so many people have an idea about what functional movement is kind of like the core everybody's got their own take of what that really is um, but you know, functional movement can be anything depending on what your objective is and I think common sense is not so common anymore and that we as people we overcomplicate everything sometimes it's just that simple with what we want to do so I'm just gonna give you a peek inside my world and the thought processes that I do um, unfortunately I think a lot of us um, really get too detailed on a lot of things and you'll find that your clients be it if you're a health professional or a fitness professional they like it broken down to be easy you know what's in it for me keep it simple show me how what you're gonna teach me or do for me is gonna help me do what I love better or help improve the quality of my life if you can't show them that, it really doesn't matter what you're doing. And you just have to get the results that you want. I don't really care what system that you use as long as you get the results that you uh, that you want. So um, basically, movement is movement. And, you know, we all started at the same place. If you look at the little baby right there, we all started down on the ground moving in basic primal patterns. And nobody had to teach you how to do uh, a squat or to sit or to crawl. You just inherently knew how to do that. So you unconsciously just went there. It's only when we get older and we start to use the front of our brain and we think too much that we consciously do things the wrong way or overthink things. So the system that you choose to use to evaluate movement and restore movement is entirely up to you. I think a lot of times people become very possessive of the system that they use as opposed to really keeping their eye on what's most important. And that's the, the individual human being that you're dealing with. So personally, the system that, that I like to use... Um, is the functional movement screen that's my favorite one and that is by my mentor Gray Cook and that's how I use to evaluate some seven basic patterns of, of movement and score them uh, as a three is a perfect perfect movement score on that and then you got seven movements so 21 is a perfect score and that's a system that's resonated with me and it can help me find a predictor of, of movement and injury and the other one that I like to go for is the uh, SFMA the SFMA is is one that is uh, geared a little bit more towards um, people in pain so uh, the SFMA one if if you have pain it changes how you move it changes how your brain processes movement so you can't do the FMS and the SFMA I can break it down into patterns and really look for what we call the non-painful dysfunction wherever your pain is, is where your problem ended up not where it started that's the benchmark so at least for me I treat your area of pain which is called the side of pain but I also treat your area of dysfunction which is called the source of pain you combine the two together and then that's when magic happens so uh, if we go back to here uh, my mentor Greg Cook says it all the time move well move often I break that down a little bit more into mine, which is you know, move smarter, which means understand why you're doing what you're doing, have have intent of movement, uh, move better, which means own it and really concentrate on what you're doing, you know, quality over quantity, and then feel great. So movement is the key. We all movement is life, in my opinion. And if you can break it down to primal patterns and re, kind of reteach the body how to move again. It's something that it, it clicks the switch, and we all have a body like a Ferrari, basically. I mean, it's a high, pristine engine, and we want it to get to look great on the outside, but it doesn't mean that it can run well on the inside. So if you pop the hood on that Ferrari, and you've got an engine in there for a Prius, it's only going to go as fast as the engine lets you go, even though it looks really nice on the outside. So the idea behind movement is to really look good on the outside, but also have uh, efficient movement and skill speed, balance, proprioception, which is the sense of movement, and, and mobility, which is the ability to move, and stability, which is, is you can control that movement. Now, a lot of people talk about symmetry uh, in, with the functional movement screen. They get a little confused about, you know, it's not possible to get symmetry from side to side, and I'll agree with you on that. I mean, I, I think that it's uh, with human beings, you're going to be dominant more on one side than the other, and sports-specific individuals, you may not want to be totally symmetrical. A baseball player that pitches is going to be 
moving differently on the right side than the left side. And if you go in there and start messing with it, you can actually cause more harm than good. So the idea is not to get totally symmetrical on left side and right side especially with a functional movement screen, if it gets symmetrical all the way around, then you get a score of 21. But that's not the goal. The goal is to have as much balance as you can for the individual that you're dealing with. You want to strive to have a yin and a yang, a balance for that person. You've got a left and a right. You've got an up. You've got a down. You've got a right. You've got a wrong. There's always functional opposites with each other. And in movement, we have antagonistic muscles and synergistic muscles. Movements that kind of work together and then other muscles that work against it to control movement. And that's what we want to optimize. So to get optimal strength, you want to have as much symmetry as possible from left side of the body, right side of the body, but also in regards to symmetry of muscles around joints, antagonist and, pro and, and synergist. So bicep in the front to tricep in the back. Also the front of the body from the flexors of the body to the extensions of the body. That's the, the main goal that when people have. So don't deal on absolutes of trying to go for perfect symmetry. You want to go for what's perfect on the individual that you're dealing with. Movement never lies. It's one of my favorite quotes. Um, the body likes to punk you and people will lie to you every time. And a lot of times they don't realize they're lying to you. They subconsciously have dysfunction and they don't even realize it. But movement will divulge that. Movement can show me how they think about things, what their subconscious is saying, what their emotions are about from the feet up. You know, the feet to me are some of the most important structures in your body. It's the most honest part of your body because people, I can see what people do when I do a test on them, when they're standing up for what happens with the foot, does it cave in, does it, does the supinator come up, do the toes claw the ground, when I'm talking to them, do they have their feet pointed away from me, one pointed to me, one pointed away, that gives me a, a, a look inside their limbic system, their third brain system of really what's going on, if they are going away from something or towards something, if it frightens them or if they have safety, and that makes a big difference on whether they're going to be able to take a movement pattern. So movement is great. I, you, the thing with common sense is just look and observe. Yogi Berra said you can you can learn a lot just by watching. So just see an individual as soon as they come into the door, what they do when they sit down, how they communicate with you, how they talk to you, all the body language, eyes, nose, mouth, hands, legs. Look at it all, and that tells you a lot about the individual. And one of the biggest things is that if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Really, really brilliant quote in there. And that sometimes we get so wrapped up in trying to impress people with the big words that we know and the fancy terms that we know. But you know what? They don't care. Uh, they have to understand and you have to make it applicable to them. So the common sense part about movement is if you're going to assess somebody, tell them why you're looking at what you're looking at. So I have trigger point stuff on my wall. I have myofascial posters on my wall and sling. So if I'm looking at somebody's elbow and I'm looking to see how their hip or thoracic spine or all the way down to their foot moves, this relates to them. So first of all, they know I'm not crazy and I'm out of my brain, but they can conceptualize in their minds that, hey, everything is connected and everything matters. And this is why this is very important. And pictures go a long way. So Break it down simply and explain it to people simply. Because just because you understand it when you're talking to them doesn't mean that they understand it. Uh, treat the individual. That's the biggest thing with common sense to me. And this picture down in here is one of my favorite ones from Diane Lee. And, you know, I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit. But that's a great one for strategies of, for function and performance. And you can see that this outer circle contains in there a lot of things. You've got the individual human being in the middle. That's where you've got to start. The meaning, emotion, story, virtual body, goals, their mind, how they think about things consciously and subconsciously. That is where you got to start. And then you go around that and then you have articular surfaces, joint, neural nervous system, visceral, internal organs, and myofascial. All those pieces of the puzzle interconnect to what's in the center. And that center is like the nucleus of the body. Without that, you don't have anything. And then the puzzle pieces must interlock with each other. And on the outside, that holds everything in together. So when you're looking at an individual and they're coming to see them for health, for help, for pain, or for fitness or anything, look and keep this in mind. And most people focus right out here on this ring. But you have to look inside at the nucleus to see what their motivation is for doing what they're doing or, or for not doing what they should have been doing. Uh, mobility and stability. Uh, yes, you got to have both. And in my clinical opinion, I can tell you from the years of doing this, I think most people have an underlying stability problem. 
that has caused a mobility problem. So common sense, if something's locked down, for instance, the hip, and you need to mobilize it and move it and release it, well, you better lock it in with some stabilization as well, either right at the joint, but also fundamentally. If you don't have fundamental core stability, which means that you communicate well between your diaphragm and your pelvic floor, transverse abdominis, and your multifidi, and you can sequence things together, my contention is that you're not going to hold any kind of mobilization. So if you can't do a simple basic rolling pattern down on the ground, you're not going to be able to hold a hip that likes to jam into itself when you stand up because you got maximum gravity coming down on your body, power driving down in there, and your body is craving stability in the hip. If it can't get it from the core and it can't get it from the muscles around the hip, it's going to get it from the joint. So the idea is to release mobility, yes, but you better back it up and lock it in with stability. So that, that's, the, that's the equation for me is as I see most people very stiff and tight, kind of like their body is walking on ice all the time. If you know that sensation, when you walk on ice, everything stiffens up and tightens up. It's a stability safety mechanism for your body. And a lot of people are walking around every day, not literally on ice, but their body doesn't know that they're not. So the big takeaway is trust in yourself and trust in what you see. And, and uh, the body is all interconnected. It's a great poster from Eric Dalton here that you can see it, what happens to the, the, the neck and, and posture and the spine and everything when people lose control of stability and support and movement. So gravity weighs down. It's the biggest impact on the body for, for movement. So everything is connected everything matters even if you take this picture and you show that to them and say hey I mean, you want to know why your neck hurts well you got 42 pounds of pressure coming down, straight down on the top of your neck there because you're not pulled back in a nice pattern so getting them into movement not just isolating treatment right to that cervical thoracic region is what you want let's get let's get their core moving better let's get them into extension let's lock in those hips get them moving around so the big thing for the takeaway on movement is don't overcomplicate it don't read too much into it. Gravitate towards whatever system is lights your fire and gets you passionate. Everything works for somebody, and every system is perfect. You have to be able to break out the toolbox in your arsenal based on the person that's standing right in front of you because they, in reality, are all that matters. Not what we think, not what I think, not what you think, but what they think. So, um, well, this is Dr. Perry. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Just my little, uh, you know, empty my brain cells every now and then, just kind of give you a peek inside my world, which is something I love to do. Make sure you uh, visit and go down to um, the Stop Tasting Pain uh, website for, that I have a lot of free information on, um, which is, I'm going to get back in here, so you can stop chasing pain, uh, dot com. Uh, yeah, I can fix a human body, but this Prezi thing is going to kill me. Um, and there's some free stuff on there, the ebook you can download, and make sure you check out all my social media stuff. There's a ton of podcasts, like 60 free, 65 free podcasts up there with a lot of great individuals that you can learn stuff from. Our blog, articles, Twitter, YouTube, all sorts of great things. So it's about sharing with each other, helping each other, so we can make the world a better place. Like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Mine starts right here. So thanks again for tuning in. Dr. Perry signing off. We'll see you soon on the other side.